Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now, whilst it looks incredibly dated these days, Tomb Raider 2 is still a lot of fun to play. Released in 1997, this sequel was critically acclaimed and went on to become one of the best-selling PlayStation 1 games ever. It was also very successful on other platforms including PC, though if there's one thing that these versions all have in common, it's how horribly clunky Lara feels to control. I don't think this was so much the case years ago, it just hasn't aged that well. Furthermore, playing these 20 or so year old titles on modern systems isn't ideal and I experienced a few crashes before finally being able to jump into a game that refused to run in full screen. Personally, I find the best way to play this is through a PlayStation emulator if you are lucky enough to still own an original copy of the Sony release, that is. With its albeit somewhat fixable faults aside then, the actual performance of the game doesn't warrant much discussion. If you have a processor and graphics card that came out within the last 15 years, you need not worry. So why the whole PC melter thing in the title then? Surely this plethora of visible pixels poses no challenge to any modern machine. Well, what about now? What we have here is a fan remake of Tomb Raider 2, or at least the first level. The creator of this epic demo, Nico Bass, released this taster back in 2017, and since he shared some new screenshots last November, it reminded me that this Unreal Engine 4 remaster was out there for any PC gamer to enjoy, and I couldn't help but wonder just how it performed. This modern overhaul does mean that you will need far beefier specs than you would to run the original, to say the least. In fact, I tried to run it on my Ryzen 5 1600, Radeon 5700 XT, and 16 gigs of RAM at 4K resolution, and I barely averaged 30 FPS at the highest settings, with this dropping to the mid-teens in some places. But my goodness, it looks incredible. I'm sure those of you familiar with the original game remember the opening Great Wall mission. Well, here it is in glorious 2160p. You know when you see screenshots of something and you think, nah, this won't look that good when I play it myself? Well, this is not the case here, and somehow, along with the upgraded visuals, the original feel of the game remains. It truly is magical. As I mentioned before, this is 4K gameplay, and while this is the ideal way to play as far as looks are concerned, 1080p is the way forward for that 60fps plus experience. As I carried on throughout the level, admiring the handiwork of Nico Bass and his small team of contributors, I couldn't help but wonder what an older flagship graphics card would make of all this. Long time viewers will know what I mean. I am of course talking about the GTX 480, Nvidia's first DirectX 11 GPU that can now be picked up for a very small cost. What's more, it still has some fight left in it and will do surprisingly well in a handful of modern games. So let's stick it in the system, download the latest supported drivers and jump back into this masterpiece. At 1080p with the low settings and the GTX 480 struggle to maintain a solid frame rate during this outdoor section here. In other places the frame rate will hit and exceed 30 FPS especially in caves and the like but as I continued to play and eventually found myself face to face with tigers the frame rate did start to drop once more. Even at low the game looks great but you can see that our card is maxed out usage wise and the 1.5 gigabytes of VRAM doesn't help. Turning things down to 720p doesn't really make too much difference either as the GPU is still being pushed to the max and although the CPU is doing a little more work here at this resolution, that is by no means the limiting factor and it's easy to see that a better graphics card will be required. Move up a generation to the 580 and you should be fine though. I am pleased to see that the game still looks very nice even at the lower settings. And what's even better than that? This demo is still available and it is free. So it's definitely worth checking out and seeing how well it runs on your hardware. If you do choose to do so, the link will be in the description down below. 
a big thank you to Nico Bass, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, for all the hard work that has gone into this because I thoroughly enjoyed playing it. I'd love to hear you guys' results down below in the comments as well. If you do try this out, let me know what sort of frame rate you're getting and what system you've tested it on. Leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully, I'll see all of you in the next one.